Good evening and welcome to the Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today we're on Dieter Dirks. How are you? I'm fine. Good to see you. Well, thank you. This is this is very special because you don't do a lot of interviews and, and I know how you're a super big fan of them, but you've done so much over the years. Obviously, people know you from the Scorpions. You've done some of the, the biggest albums. But you've done so much more I want to talk about. And then we're going to end talk about this great Ukrainian project you're working on that people mm -hmm. need to be aware of to help everybody there because it's a huge problem. It was wonderful. This comes from my it, heart. Um, it was great. great. Before we jump into that, you have been doing music and creating, but you've been multimedia your whole life. You're not just producers of Scorpions. It's probably most people probably in the States know you. But in Germany and Europe, you you do everything from video to creation. You DVD plus, that's insane. Yeah. yeah, I don't think anybody knows that. We're going to talk about that. That's insane. That's brilliant. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. So, but but to bring people to speed, when you started, you started doing making studios and recording very young, and your family was a part of it. Can Absolutely. you talk about that? How supportive that is? That's great. Excellent. That. Yeah. Without my mom. My father was a musician and artist, but he said, learn something normal, something uh, safer. And my mom said, no, let the, let the boy do what he wants. He knows what he's doing. And she gave me all <laughs> the freedom to do what I wanted to do. And, and, and it allowed I, you. I mean, she used to make your food, right? She was known for making the food for everybody. She's probably the biggest responsible person for bringing the world to rock out with her food. That's what I wanted to point out. But without my mother, she was a heart. She was so hard and the musicians felt it. She felt it at home. And uh, it was never a studio atmosphere because there was no real studio. I bought some yeah. second hand equipment uh, with some people, with some friends. And we started more or less from nowhere. My first amplifier was a, you know, I remember the old radios with the yeah. magic up. So I, I, I used to pick up for, for the pickup, for, for, I put the pickup from the guitar into the to, to the record player input because it was a high ohm, so that was my first amplifier. I played in pubs and, and to, to make a little bit of money. Right, that's where it all started from. <laughs> it, it's great. I mean, because I went to recording school, so like, especially really can really appreciate a lot of the stuff you created and made as you went. Creating your own tools is is great. Um, so one of the things also is cool. You started building. I'm not gonna. It's a compound, but you started building like everything together, which is kind of something you've stayed with kind of as your business model, right? Mm -hmm. For example, like your studio and you'll have like a kitchen and a place for everybody to sleep, all, like an all in one service, you know, an a la carte. And even later on, as you've done your production, you had different multimedia studios, your business, everything kind of builds off each other. So it's all in one. From the very beginning you've done that, is that something your family kind of ingrained in you or where'd you get that from? Uh Again, my family. I, look, I'm born in the last two years of the war. And I yeah. grew up absolutely nothing. There was no food, there was nothing. And still, when people passed by uh, uh, and they had food, we were eating, they were invited. There was nothing. But she said, look, we are six people now. Two more, doesn't matter. So let's invite them. That's how I grew up. That was my... my uh, and the, the philosophy behind the, the whole studio and the different things I did was to give the, the, the musician the home. Mm -hmm. You know the momentum when the red light turns on, all of a sudden intense. We didn't turn the red light on. It was just you and me right now. So we yeah. just did what we felt. Right. So there's a nice story. That's the right? key. That is the key. You 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 master the the intimacy of, of a relationship in music. Flourishes everything. There's a nice story. One day, a band called me and said, uh, We are in the studio in Cologne and they don't want to record us. Do we record distorted guitars? He said, Yes, of course. Yeah, but they don't, they say, No, we will not record it. It sounds I don't know my job. So they, they, they left the studio because he didn't. He said, Look, if I record <laughs> this distorted guitar, uh, people think I lost my ears. So <laughs> that's how it was another thing to be open. And also, yeah. I'm a musician, so I speak musician language. There's also a very big difference. Which ties into your whole everything. Like I said, producer, musician. So you're aware of the songwriting, the composition, how to... You can have a good song in a studio, but if you're missing the wrong... If you don't have the, the production and the skills to produce and arrange a song, 
envy in the mind of a songwriter and a guitarist. Yeah. By doing all that, I mean, clearly that's what helped create that Scorpion sound and production sound that was just huge. It was and, a lot of time involved, believe me. Sometimes it took me two or three days only to, to, uh, to check the, the Marshall cabinets and check every single speaker. They're all so different. Then out of four boxes, I picked the two best. <laughs> this is really time consuming. But you know what also helped me a lot is uh, I want to become an, an actor, but not being an actor, I want to become a, a, a director. Mm -hmm. And I went to theater school and that was very, very helpful in producing. Psychologically, breeze yeah. technique, right? It's not like a singer, they have almost the same techniques without the resonance. Of course, you don't use the resonance rooms. It's hard. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. It's basically, yeah. I always I mean, think being a, a producer is like being a, it's like being a psychiatrist. Being a producer is like being a psychiatrist for a lot of people. Yeah, I think 60% is psychology and the rest is <laughs> hopefully talent. <laughs> 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 and directing. Well, I mean, so when you actually came up, see, you dealt with, and well, just so everybody knows, you you did a ton of bands before that, really well-known uh, German bands. So you've been doing some production before. The Scorpions even came into the picture. You were doing your own thing and you're building your, your music. You were well-known. It wasn't just out-of-the-box Scorpions. So at that point, though, you had crafted your own sounds and stuff. But when you got the Scorpions, some of the things that happened is when you took them in, they had a couple, they had, had already had two different producers. And they had a sound already and good albums. But when you came in and did a, in a trance, you had, uh, Uli, Uli was, was playing guitar. And so you've gone and gone through a couple of different guitarists to keep in the same sound of the band. Was that a challenge with doing, you know, Uli and then, you know, the other guys, you know, and even, even um, Michael came in for a while. I think for the, for, for the real beginning, when I heard the band the first time, and with Uli, the combination of a rock band and some real, uh, Extra, extraordinary guitar player like Uli. Yes, yes. He was extremely new. There's sort of a good chance here. Um, look, I always try to be different. I don't want to mm -hmm. repeat things as I have done. So when it comes to sound, I work with the sound. When it comes to guitar, and now the musical combination. Uh, the first two albums, Corpus, did the songs were great. They always mm -hmm. had great songs. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, we for me, still is one of the best guitar players in the world. He's, he, he belongs for me to the top 10. Yeah, I, so I agree. I would say top five. I'd say, yeah, I, I can't pick one. I can never do just one, but I would say he's in the top five. Like, I would say him, uh, Van Halen, Page, um, Jeff Beck, you know, just for their own, you know, outside yeah. talents. Even his guitar isn't from this earth, <laughs> you know? But he was a little bluesier, though. And, and, you know, that's what he would say. He's a little bluesier. And maybe that was the difference. Less bluesy, a little more rocky metal. I hate metal term, but you know what I'm saying. Uli fe felt that uh, his uh, musical direction, that he was very much from uh, influenced by Hendrix, uh, yeah. wouldn't go for the commercial way we were looking for. And so he decided uh, to, to do his own thing, which was, was right for him. Yeah. And, uh, and, but coming back to the song, uh, I tried to make Scorpions completely different sounding from other rock bands, of course. And I mean, they were already great sounding bands. Yeah. You know, I, I, for example, I worked on the wall of guitar sound. So sometimes I, I, I played one guitar, rhythm guitar, eight times. So there was a wall to the left, there was a wall to yeah. the right, right? So this was the, the, the background. And then this left me room to bring the lead guitars more in front, right? Because you had that wall in the back. And then yep. for, if you have licks and all those things you, you have to remember, uh, 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 this leaves you room on, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the whole sound uh, image. I, I, I love that. And that's one of my favorite things about, about you because in the 80s, there was a lot of like reverb, a lot of reverb or, or like echo and a lot of effects. That wasn't you. And to me, like if I had to visualize your sound in my mind, put the headphones on and really listen, not like in a car stereo, like really listening with some good headphones on. It was like a star to me, like the band, the full band sound would be in the middle of the star and each artist would be in the tip. And mm -hmm. you bring and the artist would come forward 
more towards the center to their part. The chorus would be everybody with the guitars, like everyone kind of come in and center to their part of the song. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, and that way they could separate, you could hear the separate parts, which is very important in a good sound to, to not blend, to blend when you're supposed to, but not blend at the right time too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you really it, analyzed it, huh? <laughs> I, I've always, I, because it's so great. I mean, four, four like some of the best guitarists ever have been in that band, you know, over different levels, you know. And, you know, the songwriting and, and the production, I mean, and they've grown and, and stayed relevant and consistent over all the years. They've stayed pretty loyal. Like they've nearly been, even for uh, problems they've had with members, they've kind of tried helping them out. It's really been a not dirt singing band. They've been very good, which is nice. Um, what was kind of neat, I'm going to say, when, uh, was it, uh, when Don Dockin came in during that period, that must have been some dark days. Like I've heard Dockin's version, but like what was it like in the studio with like Don singing when, when Klaus was having problems with his voice, which must have been scary because they were getting momentum. They were like one of the first big metal bands worldwide, really. Yeah, it was a dark time, and I'm very happy that uh, uh, Don, we are still good friends, uh, uh, helped me out. So uh, yeah. there was, you know, when I, I, I booked this villa in uh, Grasse in southern yeah. France. Yeah. And when I heard Klaus singing, I was there with my truck, with my recording mobile. I mean, a huge villa with tennis court, everything. I wanted to make the band. They deserved it. Right, yeah. because we are, we are very, very hard workers. And uh, I heard Klaus' voice and I realized something is not happening. And I said, Klaus, first of all, you're breathing wrong. Your, your vocal cords get dry. And in rock and roll, when you make like, ah, with vocal cords, you get this little, uh, how do you call this? Uh, polyps? Yeah, polyps, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and I heard something is changing. And, he didn't want to listen. And then, and then said Klaus, look, your voice is your life, is your capital. I cannot risk to go on with you. We have to stop it. Please have your vocal cords checked. And it would be stopped because there he had a chance to get his voice back. And I think he still sounds like ever. <laughs> right? How strong is he? He sounds great. He's still, the whole band sounds great. Like when they say retire, I'm like, no, no, no. I mean, they should if they want to. But the music is so good. They could afford it, yes. They could afford it. <laughs> no, they could, yeah, they know, could afford it. I think they have some money in the bank, but, <laughs> but they sound good, know, though. But I like on this band still very, very much. But the one thing about Klaus, like his voice, is, it, it, it is very resilient and it's very strong. But what I like on this band still is they go on stage and they give always 110%. They don't just play a job. To the music because I play every song. I don't want to count it <laughs> how many times. Uh, but they give always everything to the to the. Uh, that, that was from the very beginning. You will not believe what happened sometimes after a concert. I remember in Nuremberg there was uh, at this Hitler field there was a concert, and the, every, all big bands were in um, in mobiles and yeah. uh, in, in trucks, right, in caravans. And uh, the show was over. I went to the to the to the, to the Scorpions uh, uh, truck and uh, I heard noise. I said, "Wait a minute, what's going on here?" I went into the truck and I saw Francis screaming like crazy. And I thought they're going to they're going to start beating each other up. So yeah. I left the truck and I went to do, do you know Fritz Rau? Fritz Rau, the, the number one promoter. He's, he's yeah. Done, I said. To Fritz Rau, Fritz, please stop them. They are ruining the truck here. And he said, Why should I? It's their own money. <laughs> <laughs> that is but, good. But this belongs belongs to rock and roll. I mean, if you do, if you if you just deliver, it's delivering. You have to live. Rock and roll, you have to live. Only to well, they, work. Right, and they're allowed to. They they're not they were not a decadent band. They were allowed to be excessive and do what they needed to do. They earned that right, you know. Absolutely. They're, but they also had a good work work ethic though, and a, and a good loyalty that a lot of the bands back then didn't have. You know, they weren't in trouble for stuff. They were just known for being hardworking. Another good album. We're gonna go tour. 
no, no trash talking, no, you know, no police reports. They were just a hardworking band that just wanted to rock. And that Absolutely. was it. Yeah. But, but that says a lot back then. I mean, and that's probably why they're still together and they're still on top of things, you know? It's, it's incredible what they did. I just read that um, they, they, they uh, are changing the, the wind of change, the lyrics, because of, of what's going on, not singing about Russia and they're changing it to Ukraine and yeah, yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, very yeah, cool, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice change to it, mm -hmm. you know? Which actually, we'll hop back in it, but let's talk about a little bit about what you're doing. We'll go back to Scorpions, but let's talk about <laughs> what you're doing, okay? And then I'm but, making this music, music against war, and I'm getting mm -hmm. very, very, very good feedback. I will send you, or uh, I think you have the link already. To the yeah, I saw, song. I saw part. Yeah, I saw it. Right. And did you listen to the song "Freedom"? I do like it. It's very pretty. So who's singing? I wasn't aware of the artists. Who, who's who's uh, who are the artists? There's another thing I'm trying. This video will be produced in 20, minimum, 20 different uh, uh, languages. At the moment, oh. I have English and Ukraine. Yeah. And tomorrow, I produce in Chinese, Mandarin. Then I'm doing uh, Russia, of course, Polish. So when, when you go on our website and you click your, your flag, you automatically yep. hear the song in your language. But it's always English mixed with yeah. another language. So this is a question, how, as a producer, and, and you're doing music now, an early challenge must have been singing, doing you know, German music and translating in German, the syllables and how what songs mean and how the verses fit, you know, and then doing it in English. The challenge is all these different languages, you producing in different languages and making a song fit properly. Is it harder because you don't know 20 different languages? I, I don't know, maybe you do. You do a lot of things. <laughs> I haven't done this before. That's the first time I'm trying this out, but the feedback I'm getting from, and I also tell people, if you have an idea, you can use my playback. You can do your own lyrics as long as yep. I can live with it. I have to check it first, of course. You can do your own video or just put, uh, look, the, the idea came actually, I was listening to, to, to I was looking for, for uh, Andy War songs. Mm -hmm. Peace songs, freedom songs, you all know. And then I, I saw in every language you find anti war songs or freedom songs, yeah. peace songs. In every, so this proves the average people nobody wants war. It's only yeah. these few creatures, bastards, who are, who are taking over and ruin the world, the quality. And, and I don't know how many uh, wars this planet will take with us. The planet doesn't need us. <laughs> so I can imagine there's probably worse. There have probably been anti war and battle songs, probably as, as far back as there's been music and sounds of just making musical sounds off of things because it's always, there's always been, there's been battles as long as there's probably been music, as long as there's been humans. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like eating. Um, can you explain a little bit more to the people like what, what this project is? Like all these anti songs are being gathered together. What was your, your concept for that? You see already that people can't take the, watch, the, the news anymore. You right. see all what, and I thought you need an ongoing mm -hmm. uh, 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 action here. So I thought if I try to get as many people involved as possible, make them thinking about the beauty of this planet. The, what I'm afraid of is after three months, four months, people get used to it. They, they, they yes. get used to bomb houses and so on. And we forget the main thing, us. No, I agree. It's like, like it, it almost, th there's always a danger of something being a constant, being like on an elevator, like the elevator music, or yeah. like when you're driving to work and you're like, every day you drive to work the same way, else you're like, one day you're like, I don't remember driving to work. How'd I get here? Like you're so used to doing the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. It falls off. Yeah. yeah. And, and war is not something you want to fall off the radar. It's a tragedy every single second. So I thought to, to try to get with this concept as many people as I got feedback now from Thailand, from countries you wouldn't expect it. India uh, is amazing about the reaction. And again, every week or every two weeks, I will come up with a new version with a new language. Uh, when we are done, I send you the, the Ukrainian English version. Yeah. And by the end of the week, hopefully you have this uh, 
I never produced something in Chinese, as you can well, That's imagine. what I'm interested in. That's going to be, a, as a producer, uh, like, like phonically and sonically, it's going to be a, a new thing for you. It is because the, the music is called the harmonies and music is completely different. So I have my standard orchestra. This is yeah. about 140 musicians on this song. Oh, to be a fly on the wall for that one, huh? Oh, that's great. <laughs> And now I have to add all these Chinese elements without destroying the arrangement, perhaps the yeah. classical arrangement. Yeah. So and this is yeah, this is uh, adventure for me. You've got your work cut out, but you've you've always done that your whole career. You've totally done stuff. Um, yeah, we're gonna have the link for that too. One of the other things you've done, which is really cool, could you talk about? And I don't think people know this, but the DVD Plus. Yeah. I don't think people realize you're the man behind that and how brilliant yeah. you you took it and you you locked it in with a bigger company to produce you. I'm gonna step back for a second. You're, you're really good at also promotion and, and getting yourself locked in. Like, I think one of the cool things you've done is you've, with your media company, you've, you've done like, uh, was it, you did like commercials, but you locked in with a company where you were doing all the feeds for like commercials for like, was it a pharmacy or for some business? Like you've always thought three steps ahead in a business. Oh, you're talking about uh, uh, business TV. Yes, yeah, that right? was me. That is very cool. Very yeah. smart. Yeah, it's where at, the, at the end, I had 14,000 stores. We made the, we, we had three, all in each store, we had three uh, TVs. Mm -hmm. And we, we produced a program. And we had a, 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 a stand there with 240 CDs and uh, DVDs and VHS at that time. And uh, I was allowed to sell this through the stores. So, and you, you see, I mean, you, you saw that all the big record stores uh, yeah. went down, down the drain. When you live in Stommel, a very little village, and you want to have a CD or, or an album, you have to drive to Cologne, then you go into one of these mega stores, then, then, then you ask for some music, then there's a picklish guy coming and say, what music? Who are you asking for? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, but that was, that was actually kind of like pre-internet thinking. That was getting it out. You were the source of it, and you found the places for it to go. And sourced it out. You were the full, complete package, like so, what the internet does. You were way ahead of it. I don't think people realize that. I just want to say that was awesome, and people need to go back and look at some of the stuff you've done, like you know, technical with promotion. It's it's really smart. It was really good. Um, did you? But uh, DV, did, yeah. Sorry. I, uh, did you have checked? Uh, uh, I mean, there was, I was too late with, with my patent. And it takes 10 years until you get on the yes. market. Then after 10 years, it's public domain. And Schlecker went out of business. That's to make a long story short. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you checked uh, dual disc. It's my pattern. Yep. Yes. That's what and I want to talk about. I was very happy. I was very happy that uh, Bruce Springsteen made three, Desmond Child, Destiny's Child. Um, made several uh, uh, plus a long, long list. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so people don't realize that you. So you came up. In, can you talk about that a little bit? The process. You came up with the DVD plus that. that well, the DVD. Yeah. You know, the whole process. People aren't. I don't know where that. You know, it, it, to people that's when you use DVD on one side, and then it's like using. It's like being not even being wasteful because you already have half a disc. You still have the other side. Putting content on the other side too it was not a yeah. thing prior to this. The idea is very simple. I'm a vinyl person, right? I grew up with As I side. am. A side, yeah. So I have an A and a B side. Right. Then I, then I heard a DVD. It has two has two. A CD is one piece. A DVD is always two pieces glued yep. together. So that's where the idea came from. Then I, uh, I was very lucky that the, the biggest manufacturer, Zingulus, for, for mm -hmm. machines, uh, said we have a French guy in, who has a factory in. Uh, he's a physicist in, in France. Why don't you guys meet together? Because it was not that easy as I thought. <laughs> Naive as a boy, I said, okay, take this, take that, glue it together, works. Uh, a CD needs a certain thickness for the data. A okay. DVD, you know, because yeah. the data are smaller. Yeah. And right. So at the beginning, we were limited to 40, 40, 40 minutes for, for music, which would, wouldn't happen, wouldn't work. So uh, then this physicist helped me and we had to spend a lot of money to get a special mold. And thanks, thanks to, to Zingulus, 
they, 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 they make the molds. Each mold just for a test is $30,000. You know, the, yeah. you know the mold made by the press. Right, right, yeah. So, that's, so I was lucky that first of all, I got this big company behind me and then this uh, physicist from, from, from the factory in France. And then- That's amazing. How is this not a documentary? How is this not out there as a big documentary? This is a good story. Yeah, I tell you, from <laughs> looking back, I wouldn't have the courage to make to, to, to work on a patent. A patent is something for big companies. Right. You have to spend just to, to keep the rights, because you have a million per year. Yeah. So I think because you're a creator, but you're a creator. You know what I mean? There's a certain point you have an idea and you want to create. You don't want to get tied down to all the minutia of the business and the suits and ties. You're like, I have the idea. I want to create. What do we need? Let's move forward. I don't need all the other garbage, right? That's all it is. <laughs> I mean, your business model has shown. I mean, you, you, you learn how to become your musician and a songwriter and you start doing production. But from the very beginning, you, you start doing your own recording, but then you decide to have a facilities for people to feel comfortable, to create the intimacy, to bring out the best. Then from there, you start building compounds and bigger and bigger it gets. You know, you, I know at one point you got like a bigger place, you know, in Scorpions and like for artists to come and stay for longer terms. It was always bigger than you needed media because media was big and video. So you created your own video division and you were always one step ahead. Mobile trucks for recording. I mean, you always just keep, keep moving, keep moving, you know, yeah. be your yeah. own person. Very uh, like self-reliant in a way, right? I can't sense to... I cannot stand still. This is, uh, I have to. No, be you can't. I, I, you're right. There's nothing. No, no moss on you. <laughs> you know that uh, before I took them over, before they were assigned to my company, they yeah. were assigned to, to Metronome. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you want you want, you want to ask. I just want to tell you a nice story. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear. So I signed the band, and went to America, and had at that time I had already success with Atlantis. And I met all the top people. They said, Dieter, you're a nice guy. You know, I buy you dinner. Because we are all good friends. And today we all laugh about this. They said, no, come on, let's have dinner together, but stop talking about this. And then I was frustrated. I was sitting in, in New York, and an American who an American from Warner Brothers who used to work in Germany. Uh, it, was, it was in New York. We went back to America. They said Dan, Dan Young, I don't know if you know, he, he was quite, at that time he was quite yeah. good for him. So Dan, I'm, I don't know uh, what to do. I'm totally shocked, nobody wants scorpions. He said, what? He said, nobody wants scorpions. And then he said, wait a minute, there's uh, Mercury in Chicago. At that time they were in Chicago. And there's a good friend of mine. It's, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Cliff Bernstein. Oh, yeah. You know, let's see. I, I, yeah, he's thing. very. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I'm aware of who he is. Yeah, he's big. He's a, he's a great guy. He's yeah. great. He is, I mean, and uh, uh, Peter, Peter Mensch. Mm -hmm. He works for Mark. At that time, he moved to David Krebs later on. So I said, uh, I called Cliff. I said, Cliff, I said, what? Scorpions are available. I can't believe this. So I flew with my last money to, to Chicago and uh, he brought in uh, Bob Summer. Uh, no, what is, wait a minute, not Bob Summer. Bob Summer was the later president. Bob Sherwood, sorry, yep. my name. It's 40 That's... years ago. Excuse me. I can't remember what I did yesterday, so don't. <laughs> <laughs> so Bob Sherwood came and said, Dieter, I want this band. He said, oh. You can fly home, can tell the scorpions we have a deal. Can you imagine what, what the noise fell down here? What, what a big stone fell down here. So that's how it started. Then I, my first lawyer, still my friend, Marvin Getz, one of the top lawyers in New York. He came up came with David Krabs. And so we got it all, to, all together. Man, that's a but, leap of faith. But it, 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 you know, it was like a pebble to a boulder to how huge it's become, you know what I mean? Every, just... every, every musician's dream in Germany at that time was to, to go to America. Yeah. So, so I thought, you must again, you must do something different. So I brought them to Japan. This gave me a lot of press attention. <laughs> mm. To finish the story from before, we got 
so much press because Germany, a German band in Japan, big, big success and so on. So I had even Melody Maker, uh, all magazines wrote big articles about it. So I went to America, I don't say names now anymore. Uh, I went to America, uh, I bought some sweets for the secretary and went to the A&R director <laughs> before he came to the office. I decorated his office, all the nice articles on his desk. There's huge office, long table, as you know, from movies, you know, <laughs> typical <laughs> management. Yeah. <laughs> and he came in and said, hi, Nita. Didn't go to his, to his desk, went to the corner where I was sitting and started talking. Uh, that's not Scorpius, that is Scorpius. Okay, dear, uh, please give up. <laughs> I felt like, a, like, a, like a, a salesman who tries to go to sell vacuum cleaners and washing machines <laughs> to get a deal for them. But it worked out. It worked out and it paid off. I mean, your belief and what you saw in them was incredible. Because you, when you saw them in 73, but they got signed in 76, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of belief for somebody for all those years. I mean, it's kind of unheard of nowadays. The world's so different with that would never, there would never be a Scorpions like that. It would never, there's no time to build a band. There's no, that's, that's a different world. It's- I think the combination was right. The timing was right. The music was right. So we were all very lucky. So, but you were also raised right, you know. I think who you well, are I, made it, you know, how, who you are, who your parents raised you, the kind of person you were, helped put you forward because you were representing the band. So the person you were going out there was very relatable and proud. You know what I mean? You weren't a shyster. You weren't kind of being kind of weird about it. That sells <laughs> something. It's, you know what I mean? If you can relate to somebody, it's that same thing that your mother would do, bring food into the studio. It's that right. very close feeling you could still do that you could build a relationship you know not anymore <laughs> sometimes one o'clock in the night we were still working i mean we were all workaholics my mom opened the door you must be hungry guys and she came with a big uh, 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 i love plate. that yeah well even rockers <laughs> need moms keeps them in keeps them in a, i said even being a rocker you need a mom i think moms keep everybody yeah. in line yeah, no matter yeah. who you are right <laughs> She, she got so many credits um, to, uh, to Mother Dirk. She got so many credits for great food and great. But, and, uh, I love that. That is that is yeah. that is so wholesome. Um, two of the I think two of the two other questions with us three: singing in German and being in German, and then doing English. The challenge was it a huge challenge to change it to switch from being German speaking to do an English language? Was it really hard or? I think that's a, a decision you have to make. If you want to be sex for, uh, successful in Germany, you, you sing in German. Germany, Switzerland, Austria. But if you want to have international success, you need to sing in English. But speaking two languages is still a challenge. And then singing in one language is hard enough to be able to sing in two languages. Obviously being hardworking, Everyone, they learned it and pushed through it, but it feels like it would be a lot of work to go from thinking in okay. one language to another. I had always good people I could call, but I don't want to count the grammar or English mistakes uh, that are on my productions. <laughs> my, my, friend, my very first hit, it was an accident. I don't know if you heard about it. it was uh, after. Oh, you must listen to it. I will. I'll go back. And and my first production, no idea, no idea. I play drums, but I cannot play drums. So I play telephone books to clap. I played guitar, piano, sang the harmonies. And it was a, an old Fisher, Fisherman song from Greece, Derrida, the original. And I, I made, well, during the production, I made the lyrics. And when I listen to it, I still get a red, a red face. It's like, uh, it's actually it's a prostitute walk, uh, walk on the other side of the street, long blonde hair. I saw you walking <laughs> on the street, your hair was hanging down two knees. What the English is that? <laughs> I mean, it didn't improve much as you, as you can hear, but uh, it is, uh, there was a pain for English people. <laughs> for, well, for that. But, but the, I, you know, it's funny about, even though American bands, the, the lyrics were not, super strong anyhow, 
So it really wasn't that bad. So, in, and, you know, singing a different language, you always get extra credit for just doing it. You know what I mean? There's certain yeah. things. And, and even with the scorpions, there's certain, I'd say, like, like scorpion isms that they would say things a certain way that people imitate now because it's like, you know, like Klaus, thank you, America. Like he does it. That's a thing. That's a known thing that's become bigger, which is great. It's fun. Can you imagine, can you, can you imagine anybody in the world sings as nice? Intoxication. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> but we left it like that. We thought that's exotic. And America is used to so many accents and, and languages. So mm -hmm. we didn't care about it. We thought the feeling has to get across. That's the international language. The feeling and is the music. There's nobody sound like that either. You know? What was always interesting to me was because there was no internet. And looking back now, you can see things in hindsight about the music business is like the production. And in a way, I felt like part of the charm of the Scorpions growth was you created your own world and you were kind of isolated from being in the American world 100% because you did your stuff in Germany. You didn't have all the LA guys and over your shoulder every time. You had a little bit more of your own world, which I think mm -hmm. allowed you to, to create a less, I wouldn't say pressured because I don't know, but like it allowed you to go your own way. I mean, yeah, am I kind of right on good, that? Where it's very good point. That's a very good point. We say if you know one thousand ways, it's difficult to find one thousand one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> nothing. You didn't know nothing. My first hit was an accident. You must listen to the sound. You will not believe. Uh, you're talking. About, you're talking about Uli right now. Yeah, that. But recording that song, the sale of the Sharon, because. Oh, the, timing, oh, the, yeah. the timing on that song is just so different. It's not the normal timing. That is, uh, that is yes, but that is Uli. This came from Uli. Uli is wonderful. And when it comes to the studio, uh, of course, we have our discussions. But, uh, that's normal. <laughs> yeah. But he's very well prepared. Very well prepared. He has a classical training. He has very good ears. And he has a brilliant technique, his own technique. I don't know if you know that he made his own guitar, the Sky guitar. I, I, I do actually. It, his guitar uh, is like him. It doesn't belong on this earth. It's, it's you know, in the heavens, right? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful guitar. I'm working with him on a new project with huge orchestra, eighty pieces orchestra. Uh, maybe it's too early to talk about that, but we if, he asked me if I would, would be interested, and yeah. I think they're making a super super thing. Oh, he should. Um, yeah, he deserves it. He's so special. He is so good. I was just listening to uh, a few days ago, the Tokyo tapes. He did. He redid the Tokyo tapes uh, recording. He did like a live thing of the show, the Tokyo tapes, which the original Tokyo tapes I love is awesome. That's a landmark. But he just redid it. And he's so good. I mean, he's still he, he jams. Uh, Michael Schenker, yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, Michael is a completely different situation. For me, Michael Schenker is a producer's dream. Yep. Uh, he, is, he is commercial. For me, that's the highest thing you can reach, being yep. commercial, not cheap, but commercial still. He's playing wonderful things, but people understand it. People don't understand it. It's only for free jazz. People, you don't reach many people. So no. uh, 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 Michael comes to the studio unprepared. He listens. And all of a sudden, it flows. He is this, he is that, he here, like there. And all you do, you sit there and say, ah, wonderful. The problem is, what is the best? To pick the best. Or <laughs> edit it together to the best. With Michael, it's wonderful to, to work at the studio. He, he brought many, many problems. I thought they are brothers, so at least yeah. his brother could, could keep him. But I mean, before a show, a big, huge show, he disappeared. He bought a truck, went to Spain, and we really knew. And we were sitting. I, there. I read that. I read that story. I've read. I was reading like it was, a, it was an older story about the scorpions. I was reading all the stuff he would do. I'm like, he's so talented. Then he's like gone. The, la the last time they saw him was in Munich, and uh, there's a, a, a hip discotheque. I forgot the name. So I heard Michael was seen last night in the in the club. <laughs> so I took the next plane, went there, and the club owner said, "No, he just left." You bought a track, nobody knows where it's gone. That is so, so funny. Had, he just does what he wants. It's very interesting. And he's so talented. He just 
He just times to move on. He moves on. <laughs> he's not. Yeah. He needs to be his own person. He's his own team. You know. Yeah. But like, I agree. Fantastic songs. I've been, I've enjoyed all his projects up, up until now. Yeah. His new stuff is still great. He is not. You know, no one has gotten bad from the Scorpions camp at all. You know. So that's fantastic. Were you ever around when they were doing the album though, like the album covers? Like I was kind of curious, like the album covers, like where did the concepts come from from them? Because some of them were kind of like offbeat, like over time. You know, the albums covers, the Scorpion covers, like yes. um like blackout. Like were the, the ideas, were you around when the ideas were coming out coming out for those? Or uh Klaus was very important for, for album covers. Uh, he, he came up with good ideas. Uh, I think when we black out, we had at least five different covers. Five covers. The covers was one of the biggest fights we always had. When it came to covers, you cannot believe. If somebody was sitting there, they thought we were going to beat each other up. It was, but it was worth it again. Right. Uh, Sometimes, like Virgin Killer, you were over the top. But that one hasn't aged well. Yeah, Virgin Killer, the original cover has not aged well in society. <laughs> but, you know. But, but I tell you something. You sit in Germany. Nobody cares about the band. What do you do? You make it. You, you make a cover. We have, we asked. We have asked lawyers before. Can we run into trouble if we do this? I don't understand the parents who gave the little girl, but there was nothing to see. Right. But the, but the president from from RCA Japan went to jail for one night. He took him. What? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my God. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had so many discussions uh, on 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 blackout uh, hypnosis. Came with, came with several ideas. One idea was a blind man working with a TV under his arm into a workshop to fix his TV. Okay. We didn't take that. <laughs> well, obviously. But then but the Herman, covers are but, iconic. But then Klaus discovered Helmwein, who made this incredible cover. Actually, yeah. it's a portrait of Helmwein. Everybody thinks it's Rudolf. I know. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's not Rudolf. It's uh, I did too until he did an interview one time, oh, and he says he goes, he goes, it's not me, it's somebody else. But it's very similar looking if you don't really know. Yeah, and it's a small because you know if you have a CD or a cassette or something, it's a small little picture, and it's it, it's good. Even the you know like um any of the album covers with the the animal magnetism, like all those are iconic. Looking back now, all those album covers are iconic. You know whether they're controversial or not, everybody knows those covers. And that's the point, right? If you want to get publicity, you want people to know you have music out. You know. we, we got Stern, you know, the magazine Stern in Germany, a very big magazine. Yeah. They said, uh, I don't know proper translation, die Sauerei der Woche, the, the worst thing uh, uh, of the week. And when I, when I came with a cover to America, that was, yeah, that was Bob Summer. I, I, I was very proud to show him the album. He looked yeah. at the cover, got up, said no word, and still looked at me, said, you made my day, and left the office. So I came all the way from Cologne to New York to show the album, he put the album to the cover on his, on his table. They were sitting there and waiting. And then the A&R guy said, uh, said, where's Bob? Oh, Bob is gone, he doesn't come back. He was so pissed. <laughs> you made oh. my day. <laughs> that is uh, well that's the thing it's but back then the other thing is i would say i remember being a teenager buying albums if you didn't know because you didn't have the internet you had no previews you go to the record store and if you're lucky record store played it over the air all you had was the album cover yeah. and you were buying and you know what i'm saying what were the cool album covers what were the controversial oh this band's controversial they must have something good underneath the cover underneath the engine <laughs> and it was album covers, right? Yep. Yeah. But then we had then we were covers. We had something to say with the cover. Right. No, but that's what I'm saying. Was... Good. <laughs> you know what? Then, <clears throat> then we made a compromise. We didn't want to release it. We said, no, I don't want that kids go to the store and come out with this cover on this arm. And they said, okay, we made a compromise. Because I said, I want to have the same cover worldwide, of course. So they said, okay, we're going to shrink it. 
and he put it in a red shrink wrap so he couldn't look through. But I didn't know that I had to pay for this, five cents for sleep. <laughs> that was a revenge for you, right? <laughs> for making a mistake. He got you on the backside. They always get you. So I had to explain, so I had to, explain to the band why we want a little less <laughs> on this record. <laughs> you're like art costs, right? If you really believe in your idea, you're not going to mean it's going to cost yeah. you. And, and I want people to go back and take the time and, and do some research, not just the Scorpions, because there was a time when rock went away for a while, a very dark time, but you were doing electronic music strong you've always survived it's going to be like you know the, the apocalypse is going to be like you cockroaches your recording studio <laughs> you're going to survive you just keep going but i want people to read about all the other stuff you've done because you've worked with all the big acts you know and you've done michael jackson you've created a lot of business things that business people should check out you know there's a lot of layers to you that people just don't see and i encourage everybody to go back and look you up can I tell you another story just from my ego? <laughs> Please. No, I love stories. I, I'm just cutting it short because it's your time. I would listen to you all day. Some, uh, uh, I didn't know about that, but some musicians told me they heard a nice interview from Robert Palmer in America. Yeah. And Robert said in the interview, uh, I wanted to go more rock. So I bought a bunch of uh, rock records, put them out of the sleeve, and just put them on the, on the record player. And always when I liked it and the sound grabbed me, it was Dieter Dirks. And he called me and he wanted, he wanted to be produced by me. But the Scorpions, I always knew when I started, I never knew when it was done. So he gave up and said, Dieter, I give up. I have to take another producer. I'm waiting now for one and a half year. Over. <laughs> well, that says a lot, right? I mean, well, that was the thing. And that's the thing about your music. It, like I said, it's like a star to me, where your music is very much on each point of the star comes together in the middle at the right points. And that, that's how music should be. I mean, you need to hear every piece of the music. You know, you have a great song, but it's not produced well, or the guitars are muddy. You got to listen to it. it. It's a full puzzle. But I think the production quality has improved a lot. You can do things we couldn't do, more or less bass. The whole thing you know, is unique and you can look you see the band in front of you, not over taking with us. It's, yeah. The drum well, sound, that, I mean, I yeah. think it was through microphones, right? Yep. Based well, on that's the, thing. the overhead. <laughs> but sometimes simple is better. I think the best thing it's going to be is, um, is Atmos when they do it yeah. right. That is, to me, recording from the 70s done right holds up stronger than anything until you bring an Atmos down, if you do it right with the band, not with having, not added to it later by somebody else, when you do it with a band, an Atmos, and people know, just look it up, that's going to be what the goal has always been. Absolutely. Are All you going to do anything in Atmos? Or have yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. We have Atmos. How awesome is it? And so awesome. I mean, I mean, uh, The, the, uh, the frequencies of each instrument in one room, you know, when you, do, when you go digital, you, yep. work, you, work, you have no natural rooms anymore. It is it's cold. It is cold. crushed. And yeah. the frequencies are crushed. No highs, no lows. Yeah. And then the CD, CDs do that too. They crushed it all. You know, no dynamics. Yeah, but the, the worst that could happen to musical ear is MP3. It's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, sit, you sit in the studio for hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks, to, to make it three-dimensional sounding. Then it goes to MP3. The first thing MP3 does, it takes all the rooms off. All the, but the definition. I mean. It's sad. It was, it was real sad when uh, the CDs came out to me. I was like, oh, boo. You know, lossless music has gotten better. Some of the bigger songs, you know, the, the files have gotten better. But, you know, and, and Atmos is my hope for the future for full-on production now, you know. We have the studio in, uh, uh, in Holland. Yeah. What's his name again? 
we have, uh, he came several times here and I went several times to his studio. Uh, he's a genius. He, he invented Atmos. Yeah. Belgian. Was he? A long, Belgian. He's Belgian, okay. so. Cool guy, he's a genius. He has to be, that's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is, so, okay, so I wanna thank you very much for giving time today. You've, you've- It's fun talking to you. Oh, it's fun talking to you. I know we have a little clicks in the internet, but how great is the world where you and I, I can talk from the United States to you in Germany and just talk about music, you know what I mean? And it's, that's the good thing about technology. Yeah. A lot of bad things, but yeah. this is good. And the other yeah. good thing for everybody is to just to follow and support all the music you're doing with the Ukrainian, the music Ukrainian thing project you're doing. People need to check that out because that's going to be good too, right? Okay. And I will send people that link. I want to thank you, and I want to have a good day. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you.